Okay guys, so in today's video we're going to talk about John Rahm because I saw a video recently where John Rahm explained the reason why he swings with such power whilst also keeping his backswing really short. And the analogy that he used was also really brilliant. What he basically said was if you imagine somebody who was going to be drawing a bow and arrow, you've got two options. One option, which is pretty typically taught in golf, is to really draw the arrow back like so and then let go. The other option is if maybe you draw it back shorter, but then at the same time you push your lead arm towards the target. And that way you're creating that same stretch, but without the big drawback. And he basically said himself, he's not very good when he starts swinging longer at producing speed. I will also often on this channel cite videos about no backswing. And what does that really mean? And I want to talk about that because this is really important that we understand it. Now, first and foremost, what happens in the golf swing is a couple of things. One, your lower body, so your sort of pelvis area, that should turn, okay, like so, but it should always turn downward, okay, like as I'm demonstrating. So if I put my hands on my lower stomach here, see the way as I turn, it's pointing down towards the ground. And the reason for this is because when we go into posture, your pelvis will point down, and therefore it should turn down and around in the back swing. And that's where I like to use that phrase, turning the pelvis into the leg, okay, like so. Now, simultaneously, if you do that whilst keeping your head still, okay, like this, what will start to happen is you'll start to produce a tilt, okay, which means you can see the way if I turn my pelvis down and I let my head move in the direction where my pelvis is going, this time if I keep my head still, see the way it produces a tilt. Now, the reason why that's so important to understand is because students that I work with are very much always talking about the importance of pivoting and the influence it has on things like your separation or if you like your sort of tilting motion. And if I now take hold of this golf club right hand only and I do a very typical takeaway position. Okay so what I mean by that is I introduce a little bit of wrist hinge, I let my arm move a little bit away from my body and I rotate my forearm. Okay this is a very typical traditional position that would be often cited as the takeaway. Now from here if I now just turn, as I mentioned, you can see if I turn around my tilt, my right shoulder becomes elevated, which basically means that my arm gets elevated due to the rotation of my body. So the reason why I'm saying that is because golfers that I meet, when they learn how to pivot correctly, it will always feel like you've got a much shorter golf swing because most golfers tend to move like this. And then what they have to do is they can't stay here, so they have to lift up their arms. And this is what often adds to that element of complexity. So. What you want to do first and foremost is you want to practice understanding how you're supposed to turn whilst keeping your head still because it produces the tilt. The benefit of producing the tilt then means that your right arm doesn't have to move that much to be able to produce your backswing position. What I would then do is an option, and this is why I teamed up with Swing Buddy. So Swing Buddy, for those of you who don't know, I've mentioned on recent videos, is a swing trainer. It's a rope trainer. And the reason why I love it so much is one, because it's manufactured here in the UK, but also because of the fact that it's the weight and it's the length of a seven iron, which means that when people are practicing, they can still work on hitting the ground and focusing also on all the benefits of the rope trainer. And what I do with my students that have bought the rope is I'll often get them doing the same thing. It's set the club into that first parallel, turn correctly so your arm feels like it's connected. And then from here, you'll be able to turn through. Now, the little cherry on the cake here, and this is what John Rahm was saying, is once you understand this position, you can actually start to move towards your lead side. See what I'm doing as I'm going back. And that, again, is another way that you can add more speed in towards your golf swing quite really importantly. But what I wanted to express in today's video was really to understand how John Rahm has this short, powerful backswing position and how for amateur golfers it's way closer than you possibly think. Understand the rotation, okay? Understand then that sort of sequencing motion. So my hands and arms turn, and then you'll be able to produce great distance with a very short backswing. See you soon.